Hey, what's up guys? Chris from Chris Tech TV here. I just wanted to make another video to let you know how to put the new payload on your iPhone or iPod that allows you to get on the PSN using 3.15 firmware and 3.41 firmware. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, you need to download the links that I have below. There's going to be two separate downloads or maybe I'll combine them into one, but either way, the link will be down below. And then you're going to have two folders here. You're going to have the PS Freedom folder here and then you're going to have a payloads folder here. Inside the payloads folder, there's just a payload for whether you're using 3.15 firmware or if you're using 3.41. So we're gonna close that out, we don't need that for now. Let's go ahead and get WinSCP open. I do have my iPod booted up and the SSH server is running. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my IP address, which for mine happens to be 192.168.2.28. Username is always going to be root, R-O-O-T. Password is always going to be Alpine, A-L-P-I-N-E. I'll put this down below for you, for those of you that don't know this. Uh, you just want to connect underneath the SCP protocol. Click login. It's always going to give you this error. Just click OK. Good. Now we're browsing the files of the device. So we want to go to VAR. And all the way down at the bottom, you should see your zimage file and your Android image.gz file. Those are the ones that we're going to be replacing today. So go ahead and open up your PS Freedom folder here. And then you want to drag over that Android.img file and in the zimage file just right on top of your old ones and click copy and then yes to all if it, when it asks if you want to overwrite so that will just take a few seconds to copy over and then once it's done we want to go ahead and check the permissions here so make sure both of those files have read and write permissions on all it should look like that if not you want to go ahead and right click on the file and go to properties you just want to check the permissions that they're 0777 for both of them. If they aren't, you can just go ahead and type it in that box and then just click OK. In my case, they stayed 0777, so that's good. Okay, now that you've done that, our next step is to start up this PS Freedom on the device. So you want to go ahead and power your device off. Press and hold the power button and slide the power off. And let it power off here. It should only take a couple of seconds. Okay, and once the device powers off, just go ahead and hold in your power button for a couple of seconds and let it turn back on. This time you want to press your power button and you want to pick the Android and go ahead and press the home button to load it up. And we're just making sure that it creates a PS Freedom folder. We're just waiting for it to create a folder in the file system so we can drag our, drag our new payload into it. So you're going to see it starts to boot up here. It looks a little bit different this time than you guys are probably used to. And then we've got the new uh, firmware loader here. So you just press your power button. You can cycle through all the different payloads and firmwares and then you just press the home button to load up that specific firmware. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off again and we need to boot it back into the Apple iOS software so we can run our SSH server again and then put in the new payload now that we have the PS Freedom folder. So we'll go ahead and pick the Apple. After you press and hold the power and home button for a couple of seconds, you should be back at the screen. So pick the Apple with the home button. It's gonna boot up just like normal. Okay, once it boots up, uh, go ahead and slide to unlock. Make sure it's connected to your Wi-Fi. And then what we want to go ahead and do here is connect again with the SSH server. Okay, now that we're back in the file system, you just want to make sure that you navigate over to VAR again. And then this time, you should have a folder called PS Freedom. Go ahead and open that up. And then you should see another folder called Payloads. Open that one up. And then you're going to see 3.41 and 3.15. Just go ahead and open up the corresponding uh, you know, folder depending on which firmware you have. I have 3.41, so I'm going to open that up. So then you see all the 3.41 payloads there. Um, next thing that I want to do is go ahead and open up my payloads folder, and then I want to uh, go ahead and scroll over to the uh, 3.41 payload, and I'm just going to drag it right in. I've already put it in there, so it's going to ask me to override it. That's fine. And once you do that, you're done with WinSCP. You can go ahead and close it out. And you can actually go ahead and turn your iPod off and put it into the mode where it's ready to jailbreak and then go over to your PlayStation and just jailbreak it. I'll go ahead and show you guys that right now. All right, so here we are at my PlayStation. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to boot this up using the iPod and show you that we can't get online when we boot up using this payload. So go ahead and plug in my iPod and then, like always, flip the power in the back. And why don't we go ahead and boot into Android here. Press the home button. Like I said, this is going to look a little bit different to you guys because this loader is actually a little bit different, but that's okay. It's for the best. All right, now you're going to have your firmware chooser up here. I'm going to press the power button until I see which one I need. And it's right there, default, PSN. There it is. All right, default, PSN, 350, 
And then once you have that one selected, just go ahead and press the home button. It's going to boot up. And then right down here at the bottom, it's going to say press the power and eject button now. So it's really cool. It gives you instructions now. So power eject. If I slip the power back on. I'll go back to the screen. And it's booting up. And then it's giving us some messages down at the bottom. Just letting me know that it's working and it says success and it, if you have a slim ps3 it tells you even when to unplug the usb cable that way you know it's going to work so i'm going to go ahead and pull it out too and we're done with that just let it boot up the rest of the way let me grab my controller go ahead and get logged in here and you should notice immediately that it logs online here there it is signed in there's my friends list, receive a message, yada yada yada. Okay, let's go over here and I'll show you what firmware I'm on. Settings, system settings. And then we'll go down to system information. And there it is. It actually spoofs 3.50. So that is it. That is all that there is to it. That's all you need to do to get online using your iPod or iPod Touch on a jailbroken PS3. So I really hope I was able to help you guys today. Leave me comments below if you have any questions. Also check out my website, ChrisTechTV.com. If you guys have questions, you can leave them there in the forum. Also just go ahead and check out my personal channel. I have a link somewhere for that. But that is all, so I will catch you guys in the next video. Oh my god, I forgot to tell you guys the most important thing. Make sure you're subscribed to my videos. I don't know how you wouldn't be already, but on the off chance that you're not, make sure you're subscribed because I'm always going to have more awesome stuff coming for you guys, more PS3 hacks, so you guys need to be subscribed so you make sure you get those updates firsthand. So I will catch you guys later.